what drives me is making a difference in, in people's lives. And it, it, may sound, it may sound bizarre, but it really is true. When you work on such a powerful program such as Morning Live, it, it has such an influence on people's lives. And, and the, the, the correspondence you get from people really motivates me and inspires me every single morning when it doesn't matter what it is. If people are having a good day and you can somehow put a smile on their face or give them a little bit of hope. I cannot tell you that it's easy looking gorgeous, especially waking up at that time of the morning. But one thing I do say to people is that you just imagine having a hairdresser and a makeup artist in your bathroom every time you wake up. You know what I'm saying? Where can you go wrong? You can't go wrong. And having said that, I mean, you are up at least um, two hours before I'm on air at six o'clock. So I've got those time, those, 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 those two hours to wake up. But funnily enough, sometimes I wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and that's, that's not good because I've already presented a two hour show. And then I kind of find that my brain is awake at uh, eight and it's a bit late, but it's okay. It doesn't happen too often. So, but you, you, you kind of get used to it. I, I think in a strange way you get used to it. Somebody who I really admire in business is, is somebody like Jenna Clifford. I think she's done unbelievably well. I really do. I think that she, she's moved with the times. She could have always just stayed where she was and continued to do that jewelry line that she has done all these years, but she's moved on. She's developed. She's evolved. She's moved with the times. She's brought in new faces and damn good looking faces. But, but besides that, she, I think she's got a, a fantastic business brain. I think that she's somebody that you can look at and say, this woman has done well and she truly is somebody to aspire to be as a South African businesswoman. It's an easy question for me to say where I was in the first democratic election. The first democratic election was the first election I was able to vote as well because that was me turning of age to vote and I remember I was standing with uh, the lady who used to work for us, her name was Emily and she was like my second mother. I mean she really was, she would pick me up from nursery school and, and she was with us from nursery school all the way up to high school and she, I, I loved this woman and I remember standing with her in the queue at the place that we were meant to be voting and it was the most special moment because it was the first time I was voting and it was the first time she was voting but my goodness she was about 50, 60 years old and, and, and I could just see and she had the most beautiful eyes, she had these these eyes that were, they were almost blue and she actually had tears in them and I will never forget that for as long as I live to know what it felt like for her to be voting and it was, it was amazing and it's something that has stuck with me and, and to ever, ever, for anybody to go through oppression again, it's a sin and it's, it's wonderful to see people being free in a country. I think if you don't vote you are stupid. <laughs> I'm going to be as blatant and as blunt as that. You've been given the opportunity to go there and speak. I have no respect for people that do not vote and sit back in their chairs and complain and sit and talk about the fact that, oh, but the education is bad and the crime is out of control and there is no housing and there is no this and there is no that, so I'm not going to vote. Does that really help? That doesn't help. Get out there, use your democratic right to vote. There are so many parties on that ballot. You can vote for who you want to. If you want to vote for the ruling party, do it. But if you want to see a change, vote for change. You have the voice to make a difference in this country. We can learn from other countries like America. We saw it happen. We all sat there with tears in our eyes watching Barack Obama becoming the president of the United States when they've been going through very, very bad times. We can have change in this country too if you want to see that. But I do not respect people who don't go and voice. It doesn't matter what the outcome is, but there's a lot of hard work to do in this country, it really is. And you always find over, over the election time a lot of promises are made and you'll see every political leader standing up and promising the world. Will they deliver? I don't know. That's the problem. We haven't seen too much delivery so far and we've seen a lot of suffering of individuals. But I think what we as South Africans have to learn is there have been too many of us that have been standing around waiting for things to happen instead of going and making things happen. That's a huge fault of South Africans, the general public, is that you sit there in your school seeing them fall apart. I remember as a kid walking around picking up rubbish on a Friday and doing that every single week and making sure that things were clean and desks were clean and, and, and the school was kept in shape. Why can't we do that now? Why do we sit complaining and expecting government to do everything? It actually doesn't matter which government is or which, which ruling party is in power. It is up to every South African, it is up to us to make a difference in our lives. Because I want my unborn child to live here and enjoy the life that I've had here because it's been amazing and I want him to experience that.